In a lot of ways, the 90s were what you could call punk rock's glory days, or at least in the sense that the genre reached an all-time high in terms of global popularity. As I'm sure many of you watching probably know, this was a result of the explosion of the melodic skate punk sound to come out of the early 90s California scene. Despite the sound's origins in the basement shows of Los Angeles and Orange County, though, it's no secret that melodic skate punk took the scene by storm, and by 1995 or 6, bands were popping up left, right, and center all over the world. Although a number of the California bands did and still do get a lot of recognition for defining the sound in the 90s, there's a lot more that are still relatively obscure, or at least vastly outshined by the likes of NoFX, Pennywise, and Bad Religion. How's it going, folks? My name is Jack Miller, I am the incredibly underqualified punk historian, and today I am very excited to talk to you all about one of my all-time favorite bands, Strung Out. Throughout this video, I plan on giving a little history lesson on their music and my best attempt at the story of the band, along with some of my personal thoughts on why I think they're so great, and the impact they have. Before we get started, I do want to mention that I made a Spotify playlist of some of my favorite Strung Out songs, so if you're interested, you can check out the link in the description below. And lastly, if you are interested in weekly videos about punk rock, may I humbly ask that you please subscribe to my channel here. I'm having a lot of fun making these, and I want to make sure that all of you can keep having fun watching them. Anyways! As I was hinting at before, Strung Out's story starts off in early 90s Southern California, and specifically in the city of Simi Valley. The band's original lineup consisted of vocalist Jason Cruz, guitarist Rob Ramos, drummer Adam Austin, and bassist Jim Cherry. Leaving much of the songwriting duties in the early days to Jim, Strung Out quickly adopted a sound that fused punk, metal, progressive rock, and some incredibly memorable melodic hooks. After only a year as the band's drummer, Adam Austin would step down in 1992 and was replaced by Brad Morrison, who brought along his guitarist friend Jake Kiley, before former 10-foot pole drummer Jordan Burns would replace Brad at the end of the year. With Jordan and Jake now on board, Strung Out would then release their debut 7-inch on a small independent label called Megalomania Records in 1993. The band would also produce several demo tapes in the early 90s, and the tracks would later be released through Fat Wreck on a compilation album titled The Skinny Years Before We Got Fat. Now, if you've seen the Fat Wreck documentary from 2016, I'm sure you know the story of how Strung Out became one of the first bands they signed. But just in case you don't, please allow me to enlighten you. The band had given their demo tapes to Fat Mike after playing shows with no effects in the SoCal area and were trying their hardest to get onto his label. Despite their best efforts though, Mike was still on the fence about how he liked the demos. Fed up with waiting for his response, Jim Cherry called Mike saying that he and Jason would drive to San Francisco and carpet his apartment in exchange for a slot on the Fat Wreck roster. Having worked for his dad's carpeting business, this was no trouble for Jim and once Mike's apartment was carpeted, Strung Out began work on their debut full-length album, Another Day in Paradise, and released it on June 20th, 1994. The album would later be remastered in 2014 as part of Strung Out's 20th anniversary box set, and the remaster also featured a number of tracks from the demo comps. As neither of Strung Out's B-side comps are on Spotify, if you're looking for the demo recordings, this is where you're going to find them for streaming, unless you plan on using YouTube or another medium. Anyways, following the debut release in 94, the band would embark on numerous tours and would also release two split 7 inches the following year. The first would be with another favorite band of mine, Jughead's Revenge, and the second with the Florida band Blunt. The second split was titled Somnambulance and featured a track that would become widely more popular after its place on Strung Out's second full-length release from 1996. So at this point, Strung Out have established themselves reasonably well in the scene. They may not be the most popular band around, but they're signed with Fat Wreck and they now have a few really solid releases out. Another Day in Paradise is definitely an awesome record, but I think it was Strung Out's sophomore album, Suburban Teenage Wasteland Blues, that really showcased their ability to create these painfully catchy, energy-packed songs while showing off a superior level of musicianship to many of their peers for the first time. Just like with the previous releases, Jim Cherry had a lead role in the songwriting, and I think this is the album he really found his niche on. The album also features a number of tracks written by Jake and Rob, and although they have some songwriting credits on Paradise as well, I think this record showcases a lot more well-crafted songwriting on their part too. The album dropped on April 23rd, 1996, and following its release, Strung Out would continue developing their presence in the punk scene as the go-to metal punk band of the 90s. The band would also take part in the second and third ever Warp Tours in 1996 and 97, along with a number of other Epitaph and Fat Wreck bands. And just as a little added trivia before we move on, the title is actually an amalgamation of Bob Dylan's song Subterranean Homesick Blues, and the line Teenage Wasteland from the Who song Baba O'Reilly. So now the 90s are coming to a close, but things seem to just be heating up for Strung Out. And come 1998, the band would have what I would consider to be their first big break. Spring of 1998 would bring big things for Strung Out, beginning with the release of the Crossroads and Illusions EP in April, and the more significant full-length Twisted by Design in May. Although their first two full-lengths are certainly strong releases, and I would actually consider Teenage Wasteland to be my favorite album from them, I still think you could argue that Twisted by Design displays a great deal of growth and kind of encapsulates the 90s Strung Out sound the most of all their records. The album does feature a lot of high-energy, up-tempo tracks like the previous two titles, but it also features a number of slower, poppier songs that showcase a relatively new but effective songwriting style for the band. Twisted by Design is the only Strung Out record with a nearly even songwriting roster between Jake, Rob, and Jim, and also contains several tracks with abstract structures that still made exceptionally good songs. 
and this is something I feel that few bands truly get right. Though I'm not fond of trying to bring objectivity into music, especially since I'm obviously biased when talking about my favorite bands, I do firmly believe one could argue Twisted by Design is objectively Strung Out's best album in terms of variety, dynamics, and overall songwriting quality. It feels kind of weird to say that because this isn't even my favorite release from them, but it's definitely the album from their 90s catalog that had the biggest impact, and a lot of the tracks remain staples in the band's set. And then to round off the piece on their 90s catalog, I also want to say that I think Strung Out gets overlooked as one of the biggest influences on the 90s skate punk sound. I've definitely heard my fair share of obscure skate punk bands from the 90s and early 2000s, and I can't tell you how many bands I've heard try to replicate the guitar tones on their records. Well, I'm obviously not saying everyone tried to do that, to an extent I do think Jake Kiley and Rob Ramos were almost the dimebag Daryls of skate punk. And I don't think it's just guitar tone either, the harmonizing guitar parts are a real staple for Strung Out, and although other bands before them certainly played around with that concept, I really do think this was something Strung Out actually set a trend with in punk music as a whole. Then of course I also have to mention Jim Cherry's songwriting, and I think if you've heard the 90s Strung Out stuff, you probably know what I'm talking about here. Even if you're not the biggest fan of them, I'm sure you can at least admit the guy knew his way around a song. There's a number of bands from the late 90s and early 2000s that pull pretty hard from his writing, and I'm not gonna name names, but I've definitely heard a lot of riffs and melodies on more than a couple albums that resemble some of Strung Out's. And even though Jim wasn't the only songwriter for the band, you'll still hear the other guys say in interviews that they developed their songwriting styles from jamming with him, sometimes even going as far to say that he taught them how to write. Despite all this though, unfortunately Jim Cherry had a falling out with the rest of the band and was asked to leave Strung Out in 1999. He would then go on to play in Pulley as well as the band Zero Down, which would put out one album titled With a Lifetime to Pay in 2001 before he passed away of heart failure in 2002. As much of a tragedy as this is though, Strung Out continues to pay tribute to their former bassist and lead songwriter as a great deal of his songs remain staples in their set to this day. Moving forward though, Strung Out were now in need of a bass player, and it wasn't long until they added their current bassist, Chris Aiken, to their lineup in late 1999. Much like the rest of the band, Chris shared their fondness for metal music, and his addition may have influenced their decision to incorporate more metal influence into their next few releases. The first of these releases would come in the form of an eight-song EP titled The Element of Sonic Defiance in the year 2000, and the band would embark on various tours, including one with the new metal band Papa Roach. The Sonic Defiance EP leans heavier on the metal influences and is probably the most metallic release in Strung Out's catalog. The only non-metal track is titled Jackie O, and it had originally been written during the Wasteland Blues era, and was first recorded during the sessions in 1996. The original recording of the track would eventually be released on the Prototypes and Painkillers comp in 2009, and then later on the remaster of Suburban Teenage Wasteland Blues in 2014. While they were on the road, Strung Out continued to write new material, and were aiming to release their next full length in early 2001. However, their schedule unfortunately did not allow them to do this, but they were able to release the Diggy P in November and got to work on their new full length shortly after. Strung Out started working on their fourth full length album, An American Paradox, in early 2002. The record was recorded at West Beach Recorders in Hollywood, California, and the band took on the role of producing the album along with the assistance of studio partner Donald Cameron. The album was then mastered at Oasis Mastering and dropped on April 23, 2002. While American Paradox certainly captures a similar metal influence as the EP before it, Strung Out's new sound starts to become a lot more refined and structured, reincorporating a lot of the pop-punk elements of the 90s era. Personally, I think American Paradox was the record that gave us our first taste of the 2000s Strung Out sound. The band then promptly shot back out on the road to promote the album's release and would also release a music video for the track Cemetery in May. After several tours, Strung Out would then record their first live album over a series of four shows at Chain Reaction in Anaheim, California as part of Fat Rex Live in a Dive series. The live album would be released on June 3rd, 2003, and once that was done, it did not take long for the band to get back in the studio and begin work on their fifth full-length, Exile in Oblivion. After recording once more at West Beach, Exile in Oblivion came out on November 2nd, 2004 and gave us another album with the 2000s strung out touch to it. That being said, I would actually argue that American Paradox was almost the prototype for Exile. Don't get me wrong, the songwriting, performance, and production are definitely there, but Exile just feels like a much more complete package. Anyways, the band showed no signs of slowing down and got back out on the road as quickly as they could. They would take part in both the 2004 and 2005 Warp Tours and would also make appearances at several rock festivals in Europe. After a little more than two years, Strung Out would then return to the studio again in late 2006 to begin work on their 2007 release, Black Hawks Over Los Angeles. The record dropped on June 12th and incorporated what seems like elements of the post-hardcore sound that was big in the alternative music scene in the 2000s. Whether this was direct influence or simply just the time and the scene, I don't know, but this is something that's worth pointing out. Jake Kiley has stated in interviews that he thinks a lot of the 2000s Strung Out stuff was the band writing whatever they felt like writing, and since they were still so active during the 2000s, it kind of makes sense that they'd find some bands they liked in the newer scenes. Plus, their super melodic metal-infused punk sound made them kind of an outlier in the Fat Wreck camp to begin with, so it also makes sense that they kept going upon the return of heavier music along with the rise of pop punk into the mainstream. Strung Out would then finish off their 2000s catalog with 2000 
2009's Agents of the Underground, which featured a similar sense of high energy to Exile and American Paradox as opposed to the more mid-tempo type of feel that made up the better half of Blackhawks. The band would also release a B-side comp titled Prototypes and Painkillers later that same year. I would say these days their 90s catalog is more popular amongst fans, but interestingly enough, both Blackhawks and Agents of the Underground charted on Billboard in the respective years they came out in, with Blackhawks being the more successful of the two. Come the 2010s, Strung Out would start to release music more sporadically. The band released a best of comp titled Top Contenders in 2011 that also included three new tracks before taking a longer break from releasing any new material than they ever had before. They would continue to maintain their presence in the punk scene, playing regularly in the US and Europe, but their next album, Transmission Alpha Delta, would not arrive until March of 2015. The momentum from that album kept Strung Out going through 2017 and put them on a variety of tours and festivals, including the 20th anniversary tour for Pennywise's About Time, which was actually the first time I saw them. The band then released an acoustic EP titled Blackout in the Sky in 2018 that was heavily inspired by Alice in Chains' Jar of Flies album, before they would part ways with longtime drummer Jordan Burns and RJ Shankle would take over the role. The recent member change was then followed by the release of their latest album, Songs of Armor and Devotion, in 2019. I saw them on that tour with the casualties and had a fucking blast, and that was actually the last show I got to go to before the COVID lockdown. Strung Out does come to Seattle pretty often though, so now that things are opening back up, they'll probably be up here soon again. And if you live in the Seattle area and plan on going, I will see you at that show. When I was writing this video, I was a little surprised at how smoothly things seemed to go for these guys. Aside from the falling out with and death of Jim Cherry, Strung Out seemed to be a pretty functional band despite coming from a scene full of famously dysfunctional groups like Leftover Crack, No Effects, and RKL. Strung Out certainly aren't the biggest band, but they continue to maintain a relatively comfortable presence in the punk scene, and they seem to be happy just playing at the mid-level they're at. As for my personal thoughts on them, well, I've mentioned before that they're easily my number two band, second only to Suicidal Tendencies. According to my listening history on Spotify, though, they are my favorite band, as they've been in my top five most streamed artists for the past four years. They've definitely impacted me as a songwriter too, especially with the skate punk stuff I write on my own, but I tend to draw a lot of inspiration from their music even when I write for my ska core band. Wasteland Blues is without question in my top three records of all time, and this might be a little bit of a controversial opinion, but if I had to pick one album to define the 90s skate punk sound, it would probably be that one. I know most people would say Punk and Drublick is the definitive skate punk record, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that, but the thing about Drublick is that it's also just a classic punk record in general, and a lot of people who don't even pay that close of attention to skate punk would certainly consider themselves just as big fans of No Effects as anyone who stands all the fat wreck bands. Plus, with the way people describe 90s skate punk as metallic punk music with big soaring choruses, I really don't think anything fits that description better than the 90s strung out stuff. I also really like their newer stuff too, and I wouldn't say it's as good as the first three records, but it's definitely worth a listen and if you're into the techie skate punk stuff. Well, I think that about sums up our little history lesson on Strung Out here. I'm sure you can tell I'm stoked on their music as I couldn't help but include my thoughts at every turn. Nonetheless, I definitely had a lot of fun writing this. But that's enough from me, I want to hear what you guys have to say. What are some of your favorite Strung Out songs? Do you have a favorite album from them? If so, which one? Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.